Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Freedom One Coffee YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to tell you guys how I started Freedom One Coffee, for those of you who have not been with us since the beginning. And then I'm gonna tell you where I am today and where I want to be in the next five years. So my coffee journey really started well before Starbucks, which was our last video. I will link it in the description, my experience working for Starbucks. Uh, it really started in 2016 when I was a junior in college. My parents gifted me a Ninja coffee maker right over my shoulder for Christmas and a bag of whole bean coffee. And I did not have a coffee grinder and they said, well, figure it out. <laughs> so I got my coffee maker, set it up in my dorm room, bought a coffee grinder. And then I realized the difference that I had been missing out on all this time having not ground my beans and then starting to grind my own coffee and then brewing it fresh every morning. And it was just a bag of eight o'clock coffee from the supermarket. Um, so I was immediately enamored by the freshness of the coffee, the smell of it in my room, and the caffeine that would just rush through my veins before I had to go to class at sometimes, you know, 7.30 in the morning after army PT at 6 a.m. So <laughs> I definitely needed coffee to get me through college and I don't know how some of you go without. My junior year I was also an RA and as I would brew coffee in my dorm room I would always have my residents walk by my room to get to theirs and they always mentioned wow your room smells really good it always smells like coffee and so I, I noticed that other people were attracted to the smell of coffee and so I kind of used that to my advantage as an RA because I would have meetings in in the hallway we would have like a little meeting room with a, a few couches and a TV and once a month I would have to have my residents all come together voluntarily and come to one of my meetings so I noticed a lot of people weren't coming at the very beginning because <laughs> they were busy with other things but as soon as I brought my coffee maker out in the pot and started brewing fresh pots of coffee for free for everyone who wanted to come to my meeting a lot of people started voluntarily coming to my meetings more than anyone else's meetings in the dorms. So I noticed that it wasn't me, but it was the power of the coffee that really brought people together. And that's what I truly admire about coffee so much. So once my residents caught on to the fact that I made a really good cup of coffee, uh, they started walking by my dorm room every day and were asking me for cups of coffee outside of my residence hall meetings and so I would gladly make them a cup of coffee. I love drinking it. They love enjoying it. But a few months went by I'm like okay wow this is starting to add up. This is getting pretty expensive on my college budget just giving away this coffee for free. So I started charging a dollar or two just to cover costs and people gladly paid it. <laughs> so, so then I went into my senior year and I'm like okay let's game up and let's make this a little underground coffee business. So I'll show you pictures here. In my dorm room, I actually converted the whole thing to be a coffee shop. I had a menu, I had to-go cups, I had a refrigerator to hold the milk and creamer. I had the whole show, whole shebang. <laughs> and I even had an American flag that covered the menu just in case my manager walked in and I didn't want her to know that I was running an underground coffee company from my college dorm room. <laughs> so before I worked for Starbucks, I actually owned my own coffee shop, believe it or not. And I just fell in love with the fact that coffee could bring people together. Even my residents from my past junior year would come to my dorm room again, even though that they had moved out of the dorms and were living in their own apartments, just to come back, talk to me, and share a cup of coffee. And I thought that was awesome. And plus they paid for it, which was also a nice benefit. <laughs> And so I became profitable and more profitable and more profitable that I'm like, okay, this can actually be a legitimate business when I get out of college. So I started looking at how I would structure my business model and that's how I got interested in working for Starbucks. And I realized that coffee can be a great business. So I piled together all of my money that I had saved from working for Starbucks, being my own coffee shop manager for my dorm room, and graduation money, and it all totaled up to be around $6,000. And I said, wow, I could either buy a Rolex watch or I could start my own business. And thankfully, I think it was one of the best decisions of my life was starting my own business instead of buying a fancy watch. <laughs> 
So of the money that I had gathered together, I knew that first I had to focus on coffee packaging, and that's why I invested three of the $6,000 that I had saved up on coffee packaging alone, because there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not even a million different places you can buy your coffee beans from, and I knew that if my packaging didn't stand out, I didn't stand a chance. And that's what gave me a competitive edge, is this incredible coffee packaging that I was so blessed to have my father design by hand, so we own all the rights to these images. This is all hand drawn on the computer. George Washington holding a cup of coffee, sailing across the Delaware, and all the rest of our coffee bags that are so brilliantly designed. So that was half of my budget right there. The other 500 was spent on establishing my limited liability company, or LLC, to separate liability from Lawton Wilson to Freedom Wind Coffee and then also establishing my trademark because I wanted to own the name Freedom One Coffee. And it's Freedom One Coffee because my patent attorney told me that you can't trademark freedom and you can't trademark coffee. But if you had a number one in between them, you can trademark that. And I think freedom was won in our nation in so many different ways of all the wars that we fought uh, and won. So <laughs> freedom was won. Uh, by our patriots who love America. So that was kind of my thinking behind Freedom One Coffee, uh, the number one, but also W-O-N and O-N-E, because freedom is number one, ladies and gentlemen. No doubt about it, don't you forget it. So next, the thousand dollars was spent on the physical coffee product itself. And thankfully, I had experimented roasting coffee in my college dorm room. Yes, I did set off a few smoke detectors, but that was just all part of the journey, okay? Um, <laughs> sorry to all my residents who, who were annoyed with that. Um, happened about uh, once a month, and uh, I just told people it was my toaster. Um, <laughs> so $1,000 was spent on coffee that I had experimented on with my residents, and then, you know, process of elimination, okay, they don't like this, they love this. So I used all the ones that they loved, the Colombian, the Brazilian, and the Ethiopian for my coffee bags that I was gonna roll out with. I wanted to roll out with three to give people variety. I didn't want to just start with one. So I invested $1,000 just into raw coffee. So after I had 4,500 spent on just the products, I knew I needed some other miscellaneous materials like shelving, tables, uh, bins, scoops, all that other stuff that consumed the 1500 that I had remaining of the $6,000 budget. And then I was broke, but hey, I had a business and I had product. Now I just needed demand. Thankfully, my father designed my website for me and my packaging, which definitely saved me a lot of money initially because had I paid someone to professionally do that, from scratch, it could have been another $6,000 just on the graphic design and website alone. Easy. So thankfully, my father and I, we partnered to start Freedom One Coffee, and it would not be where it is today without him. It would still be in those burlap sacks I showed you earlier. So once I had my business model, and I had all the product and all the miscellaneous things I needed, a trademark started, um, an LLC established, then it was time to start selling coffee. I had a killer website, killer packaging, and my mission was to provide coffee to all freedom-loving Americans. And I wanted it to be very general, as to not just pertain to Republicans or Democrats, conservative, liberals. I wanted it to be a coffee company for everyone. Just anyone who loves America and loves what we stand for and our values, this coffee is for you. And so that really helped me just start off the ground and not exclude anyone, but include everyone, which I think is what coffee does naturally. It just brings people together. And I wanted my brand to do the same, uh, but also stand for America and the things that we hold dear and the things that we love. So that helped me gain a lot of demand for my product just right off the bat from friends and family was, hey, if you're a freedom loving American, this coffee's for you. And that instantly grabbed people's attention. So here we are today in 2021, and my coffee business has been growing year after year uh, uh, very rapidly, and I'm, I'm super blessed. I'm super appreciative of everyone's support from the very beginning, and those of you who are just joining us now in 2021, starting to buy Freedom with Coffee for yourselves. I think what's made us so successful is one, we started strong, and uh, thank God I didn't get that Rolex watch. <laughs> 
But then two, it's the customer experience that I think uh, we've really done a good job on. Uh, it's not just a bag of beans that you're buying from freedomonecoffee.com, it's an experience. For example, if you order a, a bag of Blackbird right now on freedomonecoffee.com, I don't just throw it in a box and send it to you. Um, I actually handwrite a thank you card to everyone. Yes, it's not computer generated. It's actually my own hand on the thank you card. Thank you, you guys for buying from my small business and helping us grow. But then also this bag of Blackbird, since it's a top secret coffee, and I could have just said a blend of this coffee and this coffee, slapped a label on a bag and sent it to you. Uh, but I wanted it to be fun. So I said, it's a top secret blend. So I'm not telling you what's in the bag because it's modeled after the SR-71 aircraft, which was developed at Area 51. Um, so it's very top secret. I thought that would go well with the top secret blend. So it's nicknamed the Blackbird Blend. And when I send it to you, of course, it comes with a handwritten thank you card, but then it also comes with a top secret label on the postage box and a security seal that you have to break to open the box as if you're opening something top secret, uh, which no one else is really doing. Um, is just creating this experience that makes coffee more than just coffee in a bag that has a label on it about what country it's from. So that's something I'm really proud of is my brand, my packaging, and the customer experience, most importantly, uh, that I think has brought us here to where we are today, experiencing growth year after year. So a lot of people have been asking me, where do you think your business will be in five years? And it's so hard to say, because I don't even know where I'm gonna be in five years being active duty military. I could be in Germany, Japan. Yeah, I could be in a foreign country or I could be in Alaska. <laughs> so it's really hard to say where I'm going to be because I am so closely tied to the business and that's my business model is that wherever I go, the business goes. And that's why it's so convenient for me to run it. But in five years, I would definitely like to have a small warehouse space, whether it's uh, next to my duty station or it's planted somewhere in the middle of the United States where employees package and fulfill all of my orders. So that's definitely one long-term goal that I have uh, that I think would definitely promote growth so I could focus on the bigger picture and not have to focus on advertising, customer relations, and packaging all by myself. So that would be great. So hopefully you guys found that video to be interesting. If you guys wanna help my YouTube channel grow, please like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And then please comment down below uh, next to the description box what you guys want to see next as far as video content. What do you guys want me to talk about? More about coffee, more about business, let me know. Thank you guys, have a great weekend.